Hey, stand with us, if you will, please. Let's worship the Lord. Welcome our online crowd. Come on, let's jump in and worship Him today. Pam? Walk with me through the darkness Every day and every night Walk with me through the darkness Walk with me until I reach the light we all stumble on life's journey we all need a helping hand from time to time we all wonder how we fit into god's plan walk with me through the darkness hold my hand when i am lost Care It's rough, pick me up each time I fall. Let your presence be there with me every day and every night. Walk with me through the darkness. Walk with me until I reach the light. When I'm in my darkest hour And I feel like giving up Take this weight up off my shoulders Fill my heart up with your love Walk with me through the darkness Hold my hand when I am lost It's rough, pick me up each time I fall. And let your presence be here with me every day and every night. Walk with me through the darkness. Walk with me until I reach the light. Walk with me darkness walk with me until I reach the light amen aren't you glad he walks with us oh I think you can clap real good this morning I can't really see you but I can hear you get up Jesus name the Lord is calling daily to those who would be saved don't go down defeated while victory is here to claim get up get up get up in Jesus name well at the gate call beautiful they're laid out in the street a poor and lowly beggar who was crippled in his feet as john and peter passed him they saw his need was bad they had no gold or silver but they gave him what they had get up get up get up in jesus name the lord is calling daily to those who would be saved
to get up on the pews and take a hold of the power that John and Peter used. Get up, get up, get up in Jesus' name. The Lord is calling daily to those who would be saved. Get up, get up, get up in Jesus' name. The Lord is calling daily to those who would be saved. Don't go down defeated while victory's here to claim. Get up, get up, get up in Jesus' name. This is an old song by the Magruders I grew up listening to. To me, he's become everything. Is he your everything this morning? I don't want to do life without him being in the middle of it. One, two, one. Some have made Jesus a game that they play, to others a song that they sing. But since I met Jesus, I'm happy to say, to me he's become everything. To me he's become everything. He's everything that I need. The beginning, the end, he's life's dearest friend. To me, he's become everything. At night he's my last thought in mind He's joy for each moment He's hope that faith brings To me he's become everything Oh, to me he's become everything He's everything that I need The beginning, the end He's life's dearest friend to me, he's become everything. To me, he's become everything. He's everything that I need. The beginning, the end, he's life's dearest friend. To me, he's become everything. Well, he's the first and he's the last, and the future and the past. To me, he's become everything. Amen. Give Jesus a hand clap. This life with 
its great mysteries surely someday will come to an end but faith will conquer the darkness and death and will lead me at last to my friend and I believe that the Christ who was slain on the cross has the power to change lives today for he changed me completely a new life is mine and that is why by the Jesus a hand clap. Give him all the praise. It's only because of the cross of Jesus. It's only because of him. If ever there was a time we need to keep our eyes on him, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you've been, no matter where you're going, all the good and great things he's given us, we have to keep our eyes upon him. Do you believe that this morning? If we just keep our eyes on him, everything's going to be okay even if it's not. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonder.
in the light of his glory and grace and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory Come on. Praise the Lord. Anybody ever seen the video about the squirrel in the church? Anybody, ever, anybody seen that? Yeah. I think we had a squirrel in the, in the sound equipment this morning. Anybody hear that besides me? Yeah. Uh, one time, Pam, without any music, maybe we can es- escape the squirrel in the speakers. Uh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Let's, let's sing it just one more time. Before we open the word today. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strange. In the light of his glory and grace. Well, can somebody say a good amen to that? <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Thank you guys so very, very much. How tenacious you are to press on through. Thank you all so very much. Hey, somebody kick one of the lights on. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, you may want to take a couple of notes this morning. Just one switch. Thank you, Sue. Uh, <clears throat> a couple of scriptures this morning as we get started, then we're going to pray. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3 and 4. <clears throat> but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those that are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. And then Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's pray together. Now, Father, we thank you and praise you for your word. We thank you for our time together in your presence. And as we look to you this morning, we're looking to you for answers. We're looking to you for a word, Lord, that'll speak life into us and change us. Father, I have no ability in myself to fully explain or communicate all that your word says and that we need from you this morning, but by your spirit. By your precious Holy Spirit, open up our minds and our hearts to receive today. Give us revelation so that this word is not just verses out of the Bible, but it is a very personal word to every single one of us today, a life-changing word. And for that, we give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' wonderful name. And everyone together said amen and amen. Uh, I want to share with you something. I titled this War of the Worlds, uh, The Battle for the Mind, and um, I did so in believing that it is exactly where so many people live, whether you're here in this room or whether you're watching online or watching later, uh, and that it is a fight that perhaps some people have thought that they could never win, but it's certainly something that we need to look at this morning, and hopefully I'll share enough with you and with God's help. And by his spirit, you'll walk out of here with a deeper understanding of what may be going on in your life now or has gone on or will go on in the future. The truth is the most significant battlefield in your life, no matter where you are right now, is in your mind. It's a battle that everyone fights. It's a battle that everyone has to wage, uh, whether they recognize it or not. It's a battle that's going on. It's the place that the devil works on you the very most. 
It is his greatest target in your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. Most people fail to realize it in that single failure of not recognizing what may really be going on in your life is what leads most people to lose this battle simply because they don't understand it. They never enter the fight. It's a, it's a one-sided battle going on against you and your life and your peace and your joy and all that, that you want or need to be and all that you've ever dreamed for or, or hoped for. The single greatest way that the devil then will, will get to you and gain access through your life and into your life is through your mind and through your thoughts. It's a battlefield. That's his battlefield. It's the chosen area that, that he uses that, <clears throat> that you are most vulnerable in. The word in Corinthians says that the devil has blinded the minds of people that are perishing. It's not something that we may like to talk about or may, that may be our most fun thing that's going on. But how many of you would agree with me if something's after you to destroy you, to steal from you, to kill things in your life, to destroy you, you need to know about it. Amen? <clears throat> you can't just ignore your enemies and pretend like they're not there and expect it just to go away. It doesn't happen. Did you realize that if the devil can get you to think even just one wrong thing, he can control you and keep you captive in that area for a lifetime? Just think about it. Even one thing, even just one thing, one wrong thought can lead to a lifetime of bondage. If he can get you thinking wrong <clears throat> in any area, he can stop you every time you start to make a change in that area, every time you start to make progress in, in areas of your life. If he can get you to think just wrong in just one area, he can always stop you in that area because you have opened a door for him. Some of you have had wrong thoughts, <clears throat> error, even error about God and his word, and sometimes had wrong teaching contrary to God's word and his will. They are thoughts that have been introduced to you that will hold you captive in a single area. For instance, some people think that the only thing that they have to do to go to heaven is just to be a good person, maybe live by the golden rule, just try to do the best that they can in life, and everything is simply going to be okay because they did the best that they could, and they were just trying to be a good person. It's a lie, and it'll lead people to hell. That's why some people have to get lost before you can get them saved. Sometimes we need to know, and it needs to be opened up and revealed to us. That's what Corinthians was talking about, that they're blinded so that they cannot see where they are and how far away they are from God. Sometimes we need to have that revealed to us, not by us condemning people, but by revelation of the Spirit. The Bible says people are drawn to repentance by the love of God, not by the chastening or of God or us in other people's lives Contaminating, condemning them for who they are and how they live. Somebody say a good amen to that. The devil tells you, for instance, that you're a failure. Maybe you've thought that at some time, that you'll never be successful, that you'll never amount to anything, that you'll never love again, that nothing's ever going to change that it's always going to be this way. Maybe your parents had cancer and, and you've decided that that's the way it's going to be for you. That's your thought. Your family died of heart failure and you'll die from it. Mike Pinkerton Sr. is not here this morning, but I imagine because he's thought about it and I'd ask him if he was here, but he's told me so many times as he's walked through 64 and 65 and now just recently had his 70th birthday, he's telling me, I'm the oldest Pinkerton male that's ever lived. I can imagine, even though we've not discussed that fully, that has in, it's hit, been in his mind over the years, but somehow he's gotten a hold of God and believed that God is stronger than the blood that's in his generations. Your family may have always had this personality, so you'll always be that way. You've made so many mistakes that you'll never be different. Nothing can ever fix your life. You've made mistakes with other people and you'll never be forgiven. And the devil will use every opportunity to work his way in and get you to think wrong thoughts, 
dwell on them to the point that they consume you, consume your mind, consume your thoughts, consume your thinking, consume your heart, and literally consume your life. Many people, every time they feel a twitch of pain, their mind will immediately begin to race toward the worst thing it could possibly be. They'll they'll immediately begin to think about what their parents or grandparents may have died from, and is this pain related to that? Am I going to have what they had? He'll torment your mind because the battlefield is right there in your mind and in your thinking. The Bible says that he is the God of this world. We don't like to think about that. We wish he would go away, but it's absolutely the truth. But praise God, you and I, with God's help, in the name of Jesus and through his word, we can win this battle. Look at Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and that perfect will of God. Where is the will of God first and foremost revealed to us? Through his word. Do you realize that you're not going to have a transformed life until you have a transformed mind, until you get your thinking right, your mind renewed, and keep it renewed. Did you know that you can have heaven in your heart, but be living every day with hell in your mind? Did you realize the devil will use that hell in your mind to bring hell into every single part of your life, and not only your life, but everything and everyone around you in your life, every single place that he can? But the Bible says for you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you and I have to be committed. If you want to win this fight, the first place perhaps that you've got to start is to resolve yourself that I'm going to build patterns in my life. I've got a willingness to get into God's Word and to stay in His Word, and I'm going to devote myself one way or another, somehow, some way. I'm not going to live in this, thinking these things all the rest of my life. I'm going to build some strength and some good places in my life by His Word, and it's that Word that will begin to bring transformation to your life. Every time the enemy brings negative, fearful, threatening, hurtful, distrustful, isolating thoughts into your mind, when this happens, immediately you begin to ask yourself, even though I'm thinking this, even though I may even be feeling this, I've really got to go. This is where you've got to get. I've got to hear what God says about what's going on in my life and what I'm thinking and what's in his word. What does he say about this thought I've got? What does he say about what I'm thinking? And then you get into the Bible and you find your scripture that will deal with what you're going through and by your own actions, by your own will, you choose to let it take preference over the thoughts, the negative, the hurtful thoughts that you're thinking in your life. I would challenge you, and and I have done this, to build an arsenal of scriptures that deal with things that you face. Every time you face something, find a scripture in the Bible. Ask someone if you need to, but find a word somewhere, a scripture somewhere that deals with what you're going through. And if I was you, whether you use a Bible or not or in your phone, build you an arsenal of those things in the back of your Bible so every time that comes, you can run to it. Even better still, memorize those things. And I promise you, if you do, the Spirit of the Lord, the Bible says, will raise up a standard against those things that come at you. That standard that he'll raise up against those things that come at you in your mind, come out of your memory and your, the word that you know, it's the word that he raises up. It's the war, it's the war that's going on. It's the war, war of God's world versus the devil's world. Think about this. 
as surely as the devil's thoughts, your enemy's thoughts, will open doors to all kinds of hell in your life, how much more God's thoughts that are higher, the Word says, His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. That, that His thoughts, His Word, and dwelling on those words will open up for your life His blessings. <clears throat> the Bible says, Jesus said, John 8, 31, 32, if you abide in my word, you know what the word abide means? It means you live there. You get there and you stay there. <clears throat> it's where you live. It's where you operate. It's what you depend on every day. I, I can't tell you how excited I am when I hear so many folks telling me uh, about going what they read in their devotions in the morning, that they get up and start their day with the Word. And, and it's important, if you abide in my Word, then, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Why did he write all of these things? about our mind, <clears throat> about our thoughts, about the God of this world, about our minds being blinded, about our minds and our thoughts needing to be transformed and renewed because he understood better than anyone, anyone could possibly understand the challenges that you and I would face as we live this life for him, now becoming a citizen of another world, but having to live out this world and, and, and our lives in this world and depending on him to help us do that. He knew the thoughts that you would face. He knew the things that you would be tempted to think. He knew the things that would be introduced to you or presented to you so that you could dwell on that to the point that it would consume you. Now look at what the Scriptures talk about that happened with Judas. John 13, verse 2, and supper being ended, this is around the Last Supper there, and supper being ended, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Look at what it says. The devil having already put into the heart. He had and he has the ability to do that. One translation says it this way. And actually makes just a little makes it a little more sense, a little more correct, really, about the, how the process takes place of putting something in our mind and in our heart. Let me read it from this translation. It says, John thirteen two. While supper was proceeding, the devil, having by this time suggested to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, the thought of betraying him. By this time, the devil had suggested to Judas Iscariot, the thought of betraying him. Now, <clears throat> did he show up like he did in the garden when he took on the body of a snake? No. Did he, did he show up as some uh, 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 comical, fictitious, uh, storybook, fantasy book kind of red thing with a long pointy tail and ears and a pitchfork? No. No. Did, did, he, did he show up in something that he could have, Judas would have re readily recognized is that this is the devil? No. But in a world that you, I, you and I live in very, very much, but that we cannot see, in that world, in this unseen world of our spirit and our thoughts and our thinking and our dreaming and our believing in that world that's outside this tangible world right here where he operates from and out of in that world, in, in that arena. <clears throat> A lot of people have likened it to uh, uh, radio or television signals. Uh, probably one of the things that was going on right here. Did anybody hear that blah, 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 blah going on this morning? Anybody hear that episode? Um, that, that was probably something going on <clears throat> with um, no matter how hard we try and how good our equipment is, there's always some little something that can jump in there like a squirrel. But uh, something going on with, with the signal, the signal transferring from that microphone into that receiver there. 
But right now in this room, even in the things that we can understand and identify physically, uh, electronically, scientifically, there are signals floating through this room. You could take your phone out. I don't have mine, but you, I, I can take my phone out right now and by that phone, I can, I can pick up or I can send. I can pick up all kinds of stuff. I can pick up a radio station. I can, uh, I can, I can pick up uh, TV. I, I could sit right here even without a cord tied to anything and I could watch all, the, all 10 years or 19 years, whatever it was, of gun smoke. Somebody say, thank the Lord for gun smoke. I love it when I get to talk to folks who like old westerns. And we talk about uh, Laramie and, uh, and all, the, all the good old, old uh, western shows and who they were. You know, a lot of those guys, just a little side note, you don't have to be, I mean, this doesn't have to interest you. I'm going to tell it to you anyway. But uh, a lot of those guys, I mean, they were the real deal. Uh, uh, John Fuller, was it, that starred in La Laramie, the, the smaller black-headed guy? Man, he was cowboy. He was a rancher all his life. Not that, that but anyway, I, we, can, we can pick all that stuff. It's, it's here. Uh, it's, it's in a world that you and I can't see, but it's very, very real. Would you agree that it's very, very real? You know, they've even, even gotten now where you can transfer electricity without a wire. You can, you can send electricity just through the air. You can charge something just through the air. The, the Lord from, from the place from which he reigns has created something extraordinary in the world that we can see. But it becomes incumbent on us, <clears throat> important to us, not only that we not neglect that world, which we are now very, very much a part of. We have been, we, we, we've come awake. We've, we've been woken up. I, I'm trying to find a good word. But when you got saved, his spirit came inside you. <clears throat> his spirit joined to your spirit. You, will, you were immediately uh, interjected, put into this spiritual world that become very much alert now not only the, in, that's what's going on in, in you, but that world has become alert to you. I can tell you right now with great assurance that the moment that you accepted Jesus into your life, a red flag went on up in the bowels of heaven, and your name was entered into their list of targets. Hey, there's another one that's been made alive. How's the word say it? By his spirit. Been made alive now in the spirit. Now, even though they have one leg in the natural world, they now also have one leg in our world. And while we still <clears throat> have access and a right to operate in this natural world, we better get after them real quick because if we don't and they learn anything, they'll cause chaos in hell. They'll cause chaos in our world. And you began, you were, you were thrust into this new world that's very, very real. It's as real as those signals that's going on. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. And you and I cannot just simply ignore it. <clears throat> if you ignore it, he'll control your life somewhere by suggestion. The devil entered in or, or relayed the thought of betraying Jesus into Judas' life through suggestion. And it's quite often just that way. It's very subtle. <clears throat> Sometimes <clears throat> it's very soft. It's very gentle. Uh, the, the place I get bombarded the worst is in the middle of the night. Anybody do that? Uh, for, forgive my... Uh, uh, graphic example here, but if I have to get up and, and go to the little boy's room in the middle of the night, I get just enough awake, just enough awake to find my way there to the room, but not awake to ward off what begins to come at me really, really quick. 
because I'm a little dull. Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? You're just, you're just not quite sharp. And your, <clears throat> your intellect, which flows out of your spirit, if it's connected right, uh, that would recognize that right away, if you're not careful in, in, just, in just that fast, he'll shoot a worry into your head. He'll shoot a concern into your head. He'll shoot a thought into your head about yourself, how you feel about yourself, how you think other people feel about you. Listen, he has got an arsenal that is unbelievable, and he has, he has a database, if you will, of everything that you've ever done that's gone on in your life. He is not omnipresent. He is not omniscient. He doesn't know everything, and he's not everywhere. But listen, there was a third of heaven that fell when Satan, when, when Lucifer rebelled against God. How many are there? I don't know, but there evidently must be plenty or they're all surrounded around me and you. Can you say amen to that? Your thought life. Your thought life. One of the things that he does sometimes is to plant questions you remember what he did in the garden? Has God really said? Did God really say? Did he really say that? It's one of the greatest schemes and patterns of those that, that gospel or, or gossip or, or their tale bearers. They, they don't really have a lot of information sometimes, but they just want to plant questions in people's minds. It's one of his greatest schemes and patterns of creating discord and confusion in your life. So the devil suggested a thought, and then he took it a little further. If you go on down in John 13 and 27, it says this, says this, now after the place, or now after the piece of bread, again, we're at this last supper thing that's going on, Satan entered him. Now, this was a, a particular situation that, that probably Satan himself, as it says, uh, was the culprit that's involved in this because he's going after Jesus himself. But the same could happen with any of his demonic minions. And he entered into him. Then Jesus said to him, what you do, do quickly. So the, the thought was suggested. Think about this pro progression here. The thought was suggested the, the thought was received, and because for, for in this situation in Judas, because of what we read in verse 27, evidently Judas did not reject the thought, but he entertained it. He, he reasoned with it. He con, considered it. He must have to have gained that kind of entrance. They're talking about the devil. For the devil have gained that kind of entrance and control and motivation in Judas's life. He entered in. It, it means that whether you can conceive of him possessing that body, like, like some sign, science fiction thing, we, we're not dealing with that today, but just think about it in the terms of gaining a foothold or a power point of control in Judas's life, so now he's entered, <clears throat> he's received this thought that's been suggested to him to betray, betray Jesus. He's entertained that. <clears throat> he's probably thought about it. He's considered the money he could make from it. He's thought about the outcome about it. There's no telling what it was used to apply to, whether his pride or whether, whether anything else that may have been predisposed in his life, no matter what it was, he entertained it somehow. And by entertaining it, it became a part of who he was. And the devil then, Satan in this case, the devil himself, because he had received that and entertained it, considered it, enjoyed it, it, the devil then began to have a control and a, le and a leverage, a foothold in his life. And he'll do that in every single instance. One thought be can become a thousand. One consideration can become a thousand so that even a thought, as we begin with, can control if it is allowed to come in and take hold. The devil will use that over a lifetime to bring hell into your life. Anytime you take the time 
to consider a thought, a thought from the devil, you may very well have given him the right to enter that door, which is that thought. This is not a thing for you to be fearful from, uh, not a thing for you to be worrisome, quite the, quite the opposite. This is, this is information and truth that will help you keep those doors closed. It's just like someone coming to your door, knocking on the door of your house, and they present themselves at your, the door of your, your house, and, and you open the door, and they say they're there to sell something, and, and instead of recognizing right away, that's not something I want, because you may not be prepared for that. It's beautiful. It's kind. It may look something totally different. It may be something that, that you may have needed at some point. But you bring that person in. You bring their things in and all the baggage they carry with them. And you say, because you've said to yourself, I, I don't understand this. I don't recognize this. It may be, but I sure would like to look at it and consider it. And we do that with thoughts. We let it stay there just long enough that it begins to creep and grow like some kind of disease. How many of you have ever gotten a call from the IRS that says you owe money? Anybody got one of those? Come on, they've been scamming all over the place. Yeah, Uh, uh, my goodness. Some folks will try anything, won't they? And and you read about all the scams that's going on. Uh, If... If you, if you don't know what it is, uh, you may be a little concerned at first, but you're not just going to dwell on it and worry over it day after day, are you? You're probably going to call somebody else if you don't know the answer immediately. You're going to call somebody else. You're going to find somebody that knows so that you can understand whether this is real or not and whether to reject it or not. You do the same things with your thoughts. If you're a young believer and a young Christian and you don't understand where some of this stuff is coming from, that uh, uh, sometimes I, I, have, I have had a thought enter my head and I have said to my own self, where in the world did that come from? Any, anybody ever had that? Just where in the world? And when I was a young believer, sometimes I'd, it would be a, a bad something, and I'd, I, I'd, I would start asking for forgiveness. <laughs> you know, Lord, what in the world am I thinking about? Till somebody finally told me, hey, that's not you. you. You need to know who you are now and who you are in Christ Jesus. You need to know what's going on. We're in a world that's full of mess full of wrong things, full of bad things. Your life, you may have all kinds of memories. You may have been told all kinds of things that even we've talked about concerning sickness or diseases in your own family line. And all this stuff whirling around in our memory, around us, all this stuff going on. And and our vulnerable place is, that's why he tells us, be transformed, be strengthened, be empowered, become strong, become stable, become a warrior by renewing your mind. And the only way to renew your mind is with the truth of God's Word. When you have the truth of God's Word in your life, One of the reasons we've started this learning center is to give you a foundation. You don't know, you don't have to know about every bad thing in the world as long as you know all the good things in God's world that will stand up against anything bad that will ever come at you. We live in this world with all this mess that's always going to be coming at you. Always wanting to gain entrance into your life. Always wanting to gain a foothold always wanting to take you further than you would have ever wanted to go, doing things that you have never wanted to do, feeling ways that you would have never wanted to feel. And sometimes, even as I put in my bylaw, byline, feeling like you're in a fight that you may never, ever win until somebody comes along and said, oh, yes. Oh, yes, you can. You can because Jesus has made us more than conquerors. 
because Jesus is one of victory that you and I can have because we can set our minds on him and he can fill us and resist anything that the enemy would bring against us. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I have toward you, says the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope if you, again, remember, if you accept that thought against you, you can open a door that will give him access to your life. But if you resist and reject it, you'll close it, you'll keep him out, and you'll win the battle of your mind. Some of you may still be saying at this point, why, why, why all this about the devil? Do we have to talk about a devil? I just once again want to tell you that we do. It's the same one that spoke to Adam and Eve. It's the same devil that accused Job to God. The same devil that hindered Daniel's prayers. The same one who spoke to Jesus many times, offered him many things. But the word says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. And he gave us his word that becomes a sword, as Ephesians tell us, a sword of the spirit. Why a sword? Why is the word considered a sword? A sword, sword, do you say sword or sword? Dave, is it sword, Marine? Is it sword or sword? <laughs> a sword of the Spirit. It is an instrument of battle, it's an instrument of war. It can be, His Word can be something that builds your faith, gives you strength, brings you peace and security and understanding. But you cannot miss this part. It also has to be a sword that you use to defeat the enemy of your life and the place that he'll begin and always use most is what's in between these two ears. Sword of the Spirit. A sword of the Spirit. It's the place that you'll win. It's the only place that you'll win this battle. By knowing what's in this book, by staying in it, loving it, and use it. His word tells us that we war not against flesh and blood, but against the devil. Yes, we're in a war of two worlds, God's and the devil's. And it's being played out right now in the minds of his people. But even though he came to kill, steal, and destroy, Jesus has come that you and I can have life and have it abundantly. Years ago, I don't, Joanne and I will have been um, married uh, 41 years. This, <laughs> you're waiting to see if I can get to you. Uh, 41 years, we've been married 40 years. I don't remember ever seeing her mom uh, out of a wheelchair. Uh, always had that just got worse and worse and worse, uh, crippling arthritis in, in every, every joint. Uh, anybody know people that's really dealt with a lot of crippling, crippling arthritis. And I don't know how long or how far back that goes in her family line, but I know for sure that not only then, but over the years, it's been, it's been a thought. Uh, she's been challenged at it. There have been times that we have talked about it, times that we have prayed about it. And, and battles that we have thought in areas and joints in her body 
where over the course of years there have been times uh, that that fool devil, that fool enemy has come to do something contrary to God's word and pain in her hands and joints, pain in her wrists or elbows or shoulders, pain in her hips, times that pains in her in her knees, sometimes in her ankle and her feet. This is not something that's going on every year. I'm telling you something that's going on over four years. And every time, every time, the battle is this, the enemies come and whisper it in her ear. See there, you've dodged it for a while, but it's finally time for your body to, to, to diminish and go into this crippling arthritis that you were born to have. But it's always fallen, listen to me, it's always fallen on deaf ears. Because as a young girl, 16, 17 years old, going on into Bible school, Joanna started Bible school, she graduated a year early from high school, went to Bible school on her own, worked her way through, paid her own way, no vehicle, no way to get anywhere, but she went on and she armed herself with the knowledge that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he that is the same that he was and will always be is healer. He's healer to me. And the blood of Jesus is stronger than the blood of generations. Your words, enemy, and your pains are falling on deaf ears. I will not hear that or listen to it. And we have found out time and time again that he will not fail you. He cannot fail you. The blood of Jesus is more than enough. All that he's paid for to make you well and whole and keep that mess out of your mind so that you won't live tormented with it day in and day out. So renew your mind. Close the doors to wrong thinking. Set your mind on him. Let what he says over any situation that's ever gone on, that's going on now or will ever go on in the future, let it take precedent. Let it take preeminence. The first place in your life it's where I'm going to go first, and it's what I'm going to believe, even over natural things that may be going on around me. One final scripture, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 and 5. For though we, although we walk in the flesh, it's what I've spent the entire morning telling you, although you and I live in the flesh, we don't war according to that flesh. It's not a physical war. It's not something that I can outrun or outwork or deal with in the natural. It's not a war according to the flesh, but it is a war. You have to, please, please, I beg you, understand me. It is a war. You cannot there, is, there has never been, there is not now, nor will there ever be until Jesus comes. We'll reign with him for a thousand years. And at the end of that thousand years, he'll lock the devil up for good so that he and all those that followed him from heaven are put away for good and they can no longer do any of these things. There is not now or will ever be until that time comes a moment where you and I can just simply Ignore this war and wish it would go away. You cannot just ignore it. Please listen to me. You cannot just ignore it or don't think it's for you or not something. You may cruise for a while and praise God that, that you can, if, if you can cruise for a while. But there'll come a time that something's going to hit your head and try to knock you rolling some way, somehow. A hurt, a wound... A million things we could talk about. You do, we don't war against the, according to the flesh or with instruments of the flesh, but we do war. The good news is this, for the weapons are our warfare. They're not carnal. They're not in the natural, but they're mighty in God. This is the good news. The battlefield's in the mind. The battlefield's in your thoughts, but you and I absolutely can and will win this war. 
on a regular basis. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God. For the pulling down of strongholds, those things that would set themselves up in your head as truth as opposed to what God says. Casting down arguments, casting down, casting away, resisting, rejecting every argument, every high thing that would exalt itself, lift itself up above the knowledge of God. That's our knowledge of God. It's not someone else's knowledge, but it's our knowledge. Those things will come and try to lift it, lift it up, contrary to God's word, lift itself up above what you know about God. But our, our, our weapons are mighty in God to pull those things down, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing every thought, every thought into captivity to and under the obedience of Jesus Christ. Not only can you, but you will do this and you'll live victorious. You know what the Lord wants for you? You know what God wants for you? He wants you to live a life where the peace of God guards your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. He wants you to live life to the full. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. You can't do that with sick mind and hurtful thoughts. He wants you to live with joy every single moment of every single day of your life. And even though he cannot or will not remove you from the battlefield right now, he has given you every single tool that you could ever possibly need. There is a truth. You know there's even a verse in the Bible about stopping blood. Do you realize that? There's something in here for everything. I'm going to tell you this one, one more thing. Musicians, are you, are you about ready? Uh, uh, I had a, a angel's mom, Gail Lohr, uh, they called me one day. She had fallen and hit her head, and she was bleeding like crazy. I said, Pastor, where's that verse about stopping blood? And I said, well, hold on just a minute. And I had to rake my head for a minute. I, I, I sent it to them. I shot it to them by text. And I can tell you this right now, and they'll tell you the same thing. They, the moment they began to quote that word over that bleeding head of hers, it stopped immediately. There's a, there's a word and a scripture. There's something in God's word that will deal with any and everything that's going on in your, your life. So you and I will get to the end of this thing and say that he has given us the victory and made us more than conquerors in this life. Can you say amen to that? I'm telling you, that's good stuff I just gave you today. Give the Lord a big hand clap. Come on. Stand with me if you will. What you got, Pam? Turn your eyes on Jesus, one verse, then we're going to pray for folks. Yes. Hold on. Just. Yeah. Just. I'm Mike Pinkerton. My uh, parents come every Sunday. Just not here this weekend. I've been coming since we were at Page. Well, uh, I'm going to try to get this out. Thursday, I was involved in a major accident. Uh, T-boned a gentleman that uh, evidently either had a heart attack or didn't see the stop sign. He didn't make it. But if you think that God don't have your back, yeah. if you could just see the damage that was done to my vehicle and take in consideration if I was five foot further down the road would have both been you know arrangements today or whatever Yeah. but it was placed on my heart this morning to come up and tell you always always love your families because you never know when that last drive to work or from home from work might be it and uh, I know because I called on his name yeah. at the last second before impact that he's not finished with me taking care of my family. There you go. I know if he'd have taken me, I'd been better off with him than I am here on life. But he's not done with what I need to do. Amen. And just uh, 
love your families and don't be in no rush. Trust the Lord. That's Trust right. in him. Amen. Everything he places on you, you can handle. That's right. And uh, I just felt that somebody else needed to hear that today. Amen. Amen. You know, when you're, uh, when I was young and I went up and got baptized and gave my life and there was a feeling come in my chest that I felt like if I kept sitting in that seat, I wasn't going to be able to stand up. I wasn't going to be able to be crushed. Yeah. I had that feeling this morning. Yeah. So God's here. That's right. That's the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Well, I love all of y'all. Amen. Thank you and we praise you, Lord, because you are a good God. And in that moment, because Mike's life is filled with the knowledge of you, and by your glory and grace, he was reaching out to you. Even in that moment, that's the first thing on his mind is to call on God. Lord, let that be in our mind. Let that be in our hearts and minds, Lord, to reach out to you. Lord, I thank you for your hand of protection over him. I thank you, Lord, for your protection over his family. Lord, I ask you to protect his mind and his thoughts even. Lord, and even reach out to that family who's lost a loved one, and we'll thank you for it. But we trust in you today in Jesus' name. Give the Lord one more big hand clap. Thank you, my brother. Love you. Love you. Turn your eyes on Jesus just, just one minute. Sing this with us just for a moment. Come on. Let's do, let's do what it says. Turn your eyes on him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the I told you this morning that sometimes just just one thought, what if one wrong thought could hold you captive for a lifetime? Let me add to that now. Just one step of faith, just one reaching out to Him can change your life forever. I'm going to ask you right now just where you're sitting. I, I, I believe it's important for us to respond to, to the Word this morning and with every head bowed and every eye closed so that, that we can do this freely without being distracted or anything. If, if you're one of those today whose minds have been bombarded, you may have seen things, been a part of things, felt things, watched things, done things, Wherever it's coming from, it really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that Jesus wants to give you a mind of peace, a mind of joy, a mind of health, and a mind of strength. And sometimes it's just this, a time just like this where just a sing, simple act of faith can reach out to Him and respond to a call, respond to this, to His Word. And say, I want to be free. I want to be completely free. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's you this morning and you battle some stuff in your head, would you just as an act of faith just reach up toward heaven right now? You're reaching out to him and saying, Lord, I want to be free. I want to be healthy. I want to be whole. I want to be right in every area of my life. I want your word above all those things that bring hurt and pain and destruction in my life. Father, right now, Lord, we look to you, both the author and the finisher of our faith. And Lord, every single one of us, whether they're here, we're here in this room, or whether we're watching online, 
we're recognizing right now. We're, we're addressing and we're calling out those thoughts that have been hurtful and harming and destroying to our lives. And we're saying no. We, we're requiring, we're, we're calling out that those things stop right now this morning. We're replacing them with the Word of God. And we're saying in the name of Jesus, I won't think that anymore. I don't receive that anymore. I'm not going to live under that anymore. I'm not going to deal with it anymore. It's no longer going to be a part of my life. My life is going to be filled with God's thoughts who are higher than my thoughts and are going to overwhelm those things. And in the place of those things, God's going to set up a new encampment in my mind and in my thoughts so that I can live and be and enjoy everything that he's come for me to have. And I say to you, brother and sister, I say to you, be free in the name of Jesus. Let that stranglehold and that vice that's sometimes on your head be removed today in the name of Jesus according to the power of His blood and the authority of His great name. Be free. And I speak life over you. I speak His healing and His joy. I speak His restoration and renewing over you. And Lord, we give you praise in your holy name. Before we leave this morning, let me ask you while we're still praying, if you're here today and you've never asked Jesus into your life, whether some way, somehow, you may have strayed somewhere along the way and it's just not what it needs to be, and you need to renew that commitment to the Lord, I want to pray with you before we leave today. It's only going to take a moment. It's not about the length of time, but it's about the sincerity of the heart. But if you're here today and you need to pray and once again commit your life to Jesus, could you, while everybody's praying, could you also stick your hand up toward heaven and say, yes, that's me. I need to see who I'm praying with. Yes, that's me. Yes. Yes, you're not alone. There's several hands across the room watching online. Everybody pray this prayer aloud with me and say, dear Father God, I come to you this morning knowing I need a Savior. So I'm asking Jesus, dear Jesus, become the Lord of my life. Come live in me and let me live in you now and forevermore in your holy name. Now, Father, I thank you and I praise you that your word is true. If we believe in our heart, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, that we would be saved. Now, Father, fill them. Give them a hunger for your word. Cause them to grow in grace and in understanding of you. And Lord, and help them build a, a defensive wall inside their mind of the word of God that'll keep them free from every harmful thought that would ever come at their lives. We pray it and believe it. In Jesus' wonderful name, and everyone in agreement said a great amen and amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord one more big hand clap. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and give you pre peace and grace everywhere in your life, including your mind and your thoughts. May the Lord supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Let no weapon, let no thought, let no suggestion, let nothing designed against you find fulfillment or success anywhere in your life. May the Lord give his angels charge over you. Let them encamp round about you. May they lift you up and bear you up and keep you in their very own hands, lest you even dash your foot against a stone. Be blessed in the country, be blessed in the city, be blessed coming in and be blessed going out. Be the head and not the tail and only and always be above and never be beneath in Jesus' name. If you love it, give the Lord a good amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Hope to see you tomorrow night at New Hope.